Hi everybody, Joe Brancato, the Airgun Scientist. So we're unboxing a Corette. Uh, we're going to show to you a few ways how to get her up and running. Um, adding the coolant or the antifreeze, adding the oil, and um, installing the alpha filter. Okay, so let's start first with the antifreeze. Uh, when we first got the Corettes, they did not furnish, or we did not furnish, uh, this really jazzy syringe. So we went to the uh, local pharmacy, CVS is around here. We got one of these little five milliliter um, needles, syringes. And um, you get a half inch wrench. You loosen the highest one here, pull it off. This will slide down this little metal thing. So you just do this, okay? And we'll speed this up. But basically all you do is you loosen this, okay? And then after you get it down to a certain point, this will just slide down the tube. Then you pull the tube. Be careful. Uh, we filmed this so many times. I smashed the oil breather and I broke it off. So through the wonders of uh, camera -icity, uh, we have a new oil filter uh, breather. So when you pull this, because it's on pretty tight after you pull this metal thing off, you know, you get it down to here like this. And then you can just pull it. I'm just going to show you how it slides down the tube here. See, it slides down the tube and it's on there pretty good. When I pulled it, I was on that side of the camera or of the compressor and I just smashed that and I broke it off. So I was like, oh, that's not something we like. So we're going to have to tell everybody to be careful of that. Okay, so you pull this tube off and this tube, after you pull it off, you hold it up here and there's no flip fluid anywhere. And what you start doing is now that you got this nice handy dandy one, this will be a lot easier. You fill this up with the antifreeze, stick it in the tube, start pumping it down and get it to go all the way down into here, fill up the radiator, because there's a radiator in here, and then it'll start coming back up here. Now, something I discovered after we did this for a few days, you'll get air bubbles. I don't like the air bubbles, they don't look good. Plus there could be voids in here that you wanna do. One thing I discovered, when you tilt the unit up like this, there's a lot of voids in the radiator, and I was getting a lot of air out of the radiator after I had this all sealed up. Filled it all up and I noticed, oh, look at all this air that was coming out. So I've done this enough times now that the air isn't coming out, but there is air in that radiator. So when you're filling it, give it a break, let the air come up out of here and bubble up out of the radiator because, you know, you're letting, these are the high spots. So when I did that, all the air bubbles came out and then boom, that's what we did. Okay, so we just saw when we tilted it, we got a little bit more air bubbles and I want to get rid of those. So I'm going to show you. you got to pull the hose off gently or firmly. And it's on there pretty good. Okay. And that's how I went like that. So don't do that. So I'm not going to use the new needle. We'll just give that to another customer. We'll still use our little CVS uh, pharmacy. A CVS pharmacy product. Okay. And then you just go like this. And then what I was doing too, I'd stick a rag here and uh, fill it up until I started seeing liquid coming out of there. There we go. Now we know that it's pretty much full. There you go. That's why you put the rag there to pick up that extra. Then you get your handy dandy half inch wrench, which is probably 12 millimeter, I'm guessing, truly, but half inch works fine for 12 mil. And that's what I'm using in this case. So you turn, tighten that back up by finger tight, and then you snug it up to make it secure. Okay, and that's how you fill up the radiator. Now, if you're getting any overheating problems, that's going to be your issue is you didn't fill up the radiator. I had a couple of people like it's it's overheating. I said you put the fluid in what fluid? I said, you need to put the coolant in it. The we're using standard Prestone or whatever brand there is out there and tastes delicious too. Nice and sweet. Um, so that's the, the coolant. As for the oil, we use the same oil that Bauer compressors use. In fact, uh, we buy it in bulk and then uh, that's what you're getting, which is really some high grade stuff. That goes in here. And then according to the direct shown age, you're supposed to fill it right up to that red dot. Look, see the picture here? It says like just to the top of the dot. I think we might have just a little extra as we pan back, you'll see it covers it, but it's not like way too much that it's gonna froth up or anything. Okay, so then after you put that amount of oil in there, I think it's about a third of a liter or a quart. It's roughly, you should get about three fills. Oh, on that topic, I think the directions say five hours after the first uh, run, just to kind of break it in, change the oil, and then after that, you know, it's much longer. So there's the uh, breather back on. 
liquids in, oils in. Now, the last thing um, is the alpha filter. Now, the alpha filter has to be installed vertically, as we said in our previous videos, why our filter works and why the knockoffs and copies don't. The bottom line is, well, there's a number of them. There's like five reasons. But one of them that's very important is our filter's up here with a space down here for the water to collect. Then you have this bleeder knob down here that allows the water to come out. You need that. If you don't have that, two things will happen. One, the liquid will just travel right up to the filter media, which can only hold a fifth of its weight in water. So, boom, the first time you use it, it's shot. And even if you had it mounted vertically and somehow you had separated the water from the filter media, unless you're draining that water out of the filter, the media is so water absorbing or hygroscopic, it'll just suck up the moisture that's left remaining in the tube. You have to bleed it out. Okay, bottom line. So bleed it out every time. Once at the end is fine, but make sure you bleed out the moisture. So that's a little thing. Now we used um, two and a half inch hose clamps worked fine. Actually, they were perfect. We used them up. A customer bought the unit. It was our test unit. So now we have a, only, all we have left is three inch. We went to uh, one of those places that you got like a bunch of uh, hose clamps, two, two and a half, three inches. And two and a half was perfect. Two is too small, so we're going to use a three. So basically, we're going to show you how we do this. We got a little spot here to put the hose. First of all, get the hose connected onto the filter. Okay, make sure the connector. Yeah, let's do it this way. Make sure the collar goes forward. Whenever you use a female quick disconnect, if the collar's like that, it's not firmly connected. It has to be all the way forward like that. Whenever I get a call from somebody who says, my female quick disconnect leaks, I tell them, yep. I said, and I bet I know what happened is one time you didn't have the collar up all the way. It got to about two or 3,000 PSI and it blew off, scared the pants off you. And they go, yeah, it did that one time. What happens is there's an O-ring inside, which you probably can't see in the camera, which is fine. But there's an O-ring inside that will either become missing or damaged. And when that happens, then just call us up. We'll send you a new O-ring. But that's why when you put it on, watch. That's not on. That's on. Or you can always pull the thing. So now you've got the hose set up here. All right, we're going to place it in that direction and we'll give it a shot. Now we've got our two and a half. Oh, sorry. No, this is a three inch hose clamp. And through the beauty of Camryology, we're going to show you how we uh, put this on quickly and we'll speed this part up for you. Okay, so that's one hose clamp right here. That's pretty tight. If you wanted to put another one, you could put another one down here. That'd be fine too. Um, but I think one's good enough. But like I said, if you want to do two, that's fine. That's probably the way I would do it. I'd just throw on a second one just for the heck of it. Okay, so that's the air filtration system. Now, remember, this is made to fill a carbon fiber tank like this. Right. Now, most of these kind of tanks have a bleeder on them, okay? So that when the, we'll show you how this whole thing works. Now, the air comes out of here, into here, pressurizes this. This is your PMV, your pressure maintaining valve. Everything from this point on is under pressure now, okay? The PMV has to be at the very end because it needs to keep the filter under pressure. In fact, that's why our filter works. Copies of ours don't, simply because if the filter's not kept under constant pressure, the media doesn't have its chance to work. Filters work best when the air is under pressure and you're squeezing the water out. That's why we have a PMV here. Not here, over here. So we have the PMV, but that does something. It's also a one-way check valve. It lets the pressure build up so that the pressure is higher here than it is here. But then when you, this will keep pressure in there, which means if you were filling an air gun, okay, if this was an air gun, it would be under pressure and you couldn't bleed it. We'd have to put another bleeder up here, okay? Now, when you have a carbon fiber tank, 
it has a bleeder right here, no problem. Okay, so we're just letting you know up front, if you're going to fill something like an air gun or a CO2 tank that takes high pressure air, you know, those 3,000 PSI tanks, something like this that goes, are extended tanks that are bigger for the, for the gauntlets and similar guns. Uh, if you're going to fill up a tank like this, there's no bleeder on these. Okay, so if I hook this up like this right now and I filled the tank up to 3,000, I couldn't disconnect it. So that's another thing you should know. If you're going to do that, if you're going to fill your guns directly, we can install an optional bleeder in line up here. Yes, there's a bleeder down here, which lets out the moisture, and it depressurizes this, but it doesn't depressurize from here to here because of the one-way check valve. So remember that. Uh, lastly, we're going to show to you how to set the dial over here. Now. You don't put glycerin in here. Uh, in a previous video, we actually have glycerin in it. We thought you did, you could. And that was because it was the customers who put it in. But we've never put glycerin in it. It works fine anyway. The idea of glycerin is to stop the shaking. This thing runs so smooth, there is no shaking. And so we say, do not put glycerin in the gauge. Now, this one's set for 45. This little black knob that I'm turning here without pushing it in, that is not an indicator. It only tells you, or it helps you move these needles around. This needle... And that needle and basically this is a what we used to call in the industry a pull in and drop out uh, type of a connection so basically what this is doing here is the red tells you where it's going to stop so let's set it to 4500 and I would set this one to 4500 too just to keep them both the same but people are going to ask you well why are there two needles and I'll explain that for you the the dropout would be at 4,500, meaning it'll get to 4,500 and it'll stop. Now, if you were had this hooked up to some kind of a tank system and the tank system went down to, what? Uh, let's make it 3,000 PSI so life's easy. Okay. When it got back down to 3,000 PSI, it would automatically turn back on. Okay. Just set it to both to 4,500 or whatever your tank needs and leave it there and make life easy. Okay. And it'll stay at 4,500 and shut off at 4,500. So that's how you use the uh, set up the needle for setting up the pressure. So let's see, we hit up the uh, thermal requirements for the coolants, put the coolant in there. We've got the oil in here. We've got the um, tank. Let's, let's hook it up to the tank and just let you hear how quiet this unit is. Very quiet. You can easily have a conversation. Okay, and we're going to start it. Oh, and there's, there you go. That's as loud as the unit is. I mean, I'm standing in front of the unit. It's like a sewing machine. And the first time this happened, scared the pants off me, the automatic condensate drain will let out a psh unexpectedly because it just does that. There's a timer over here for how often it happens and how long the duration of the uh, drainage occurs. So it might be like set it for every couple of minutes to last a second or every half hour to last a couple seconds, whatever. But the first time it goes off, it's a little nerve-wracking. You're not expecting it. You don't know what to hear. And all of a sudden, I heard this pop, or not a pop, but a And it, it's a little, it'll sound like this. Something like that. So those are set over here. And uh, that's it. You can see it's got the hour timer over here. We've used this one for about three hours. Just kind of, it took three hours to fill up the great white from empty. So it would take a third of the, an hour to fill up from 3,000 to 45. Now... Oh, another thing. People are going to say, right over here, Rick. If you notice, this is climbing. Okay? But this, take a peek, is stuck at the same pressure. Okay. The PMV is here. That's it. So the pressure maintaining valve is waiting for about 2,000 PSI before it lets any air out. So in other words, all this system here is building up pressure and nothing's coming out of here. That's why this gauge says zero right now. So now that's why this says zero because the pressure maintaining valve is maintaining the pressure inside the filter up until about 2,000, give or take a couple hundred. When it gets to the right pressure, the pressure maintaining valve will open and this gauge will start going up. So we're gonna watch that, we're gonna time the Fast forward through it and let you watch. We're going to show you here. Come a little close, Rick. Give us a shot. 
and we're going to show you here. So when this starts moving, there you go. So just to prove it, yeah, right around 2000 is where she opened up. Okay, so good. That's just where we want it. So what will happen is the unit will automatically shut off. You'll hear the alarm go beep, beep, beep to let you know that it's done. Simple as that. Everything will work great. As long as you keep your bleeder shut. I had mine just cracked open a slight amount. You can hear that sound. But that's it. Um, again, like I said, make sure you tilt the unit to get those bubbles out. There's some more. See them coming up? Those are those bubbles that are trapped. They're popping up. Um, and that's the, that's the air bubbles you want to get out because, um, that's less circulation. Uh, there could be air in the heads. You want these heads to remain cool and, uh, well, well done, but that's it. Hope you're having a great day. That's our alpha correct. There it is. That's the, uh, automatic condensate drain going off. A little unnerving the first time you hear it because you're like, what I do? What I do? Yeah, that's what it's doing. It's just turning on. Often it'll turn on when you turn on. Uh, it'll go on the first time you turn on the unit, too. So there you are. I like the unit a lot. It's a really good quality unit. I think it is the best unit out there. I do not say that with any prejudice. I it took a long time for me to want to buy and sell a unit from China. Uh, we've seen them all. Uh, from A to Z, from Alpha to wherever. Uh, they just have not been up to our standards. Uh, we sold them in the past and they didn't go well. This unit's a good unit. We're really happy with it. Uh, we stand by it with our typical air tax for sale warranty. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you give us a call. So, please be sure to follow us on Facebook. Uh, that would be air tax for sale and to like it as well as our YouTube channel, the air gun scientist, please follow that and tell your friends.